So, and um, just to introduce um, the talk today, creating podcasts and providing audio feedback to students, we're looking at a free software called Audacity. Um, so David's going to start, I think, just to do a walk through the software, and Maura's going to put it in context in terms of how she uses it in her uh, home course. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Anne. Um, suppose the conversation today is going to be a very brief introduction to Audacity, which is just a free open source audio um, creator and editor. So um, the title of the conversation is just creating podcasts and, and providing audio feedback to students. And, and we'll, um, we'll run through a few, uh, a few things in this presentation. Firstly, we're going to run through what exactly a podcast is and, and why would you want to use one. Um, secondly, I'm going to look at Audacity uh, because that's the, I suppose, the basis for, for this presentation today. It is, as I mentioned, a free open source audio editor. Um, I'm going to look at using Audacity um, and go through a few of the, the controls within the user interface and also maybe look at where you can get Audacity from, how to get lame MP3, which is required if you want to export audio files to MP3 format, and also maybe look um, very briefly and maybe just see a bit of equipment that you might need attached to your laptop or PC if you're using Audacity to record some audio. I'm then going to look at uploading audio files to Moodle, and then more in on here, um, in our Irish department is going to go through the practical application of Audacity and we'll look at how Maura used it in a very inventive way to give uh, student feedback and also to get audio from Radio and Gaeltachta as well. So um, I'll continue on there and we'll just look at a brief video um, about what exactly a podcast is. Remember the good old days of TV and radio? Everyone would gather around to be entertained. Shows were broadcast at specific times, and if you weren't there on time, you missed it. Broadcasts disappeared into the ether. Well, things have changed. This is podcasting in plain English. Here's the big idea. Thanks to podcasting, show times don't matter. When a new show is created, podcasting gives you a way to capture it and take it with you to watch or listen to later, usually for free. It makes shows personal and available on demand. That's what makes it different from broadcasting. It works by setting up a connection between a website and a computer so that new shows automatically show up when available. Here are three reasons why podcasting is becoming so popular. The first is that anyone can do it. No satellites, radio towers, or studios needed. Most people only need a microphone or video camera, a computer, and a connection to the web. With these things in place, they can make their own show that is open to everyone. It also means that there's a wide variety of podcasts. Whether it's investment advice from Wall Street or your neighbor's gardening show from down the street, there's likely a podcast for you. The second is subscriptions. This means that if you visit a website that has a great podcast, you can click a button and subscribe to receive future shows automatically. All you need is a free tool called a podcatcher like iTunes, that acts as a way to capture the shows. The shows become yours to listen to or watch as much as you want, where you want. The third reason is gadgetry. You can download a podcast onto a computer, but you can also download it to an MP3 player or other portable device and take it with you. And remember, podcasts work on all sorts of devices, not just iPods. So, let's look at how Jason uses podcasts. He uses the web every day, rides the bus to work, and loves Japanese culture. Recently, he found a podcast by a Western couple living in Tokyo. After a quick listen, he subscribed to their podcast from their website. That night, as he slept, a new show downloaded onto his MP3 player. The next morning, he was on the bus, listening to his new friends in Tokyo, imagining what it would be like to eat the freshest sushi in the world. Podcasting made it happen. It made it possible for the couple in Japan to create a show for only a few yen. It made it possible for Jason to subscribe to their show and take it with him. Podcasting means we don't have to depend on traditional media. Now, everyone can have a voice that shows their true colors. I'm Lee Lefevre, and this has been Podcasting in Plain English. Okay, so you got a little bit of a taste anyway to see what 
podcasting uh, is and uh, what it can be used for, how simple it is to create podcasts. It's basically audio recordings um, that can be accessed at any time. So, for example, if there is um, a radio broadcast broadcast on at one o'clock or something like that and you can't uh, make one o'clock it's similar to a lecture recording or anything like that you can always access it later uh, by podcast so um we'll move on and we'll look at audacity so audacity is the free easy to use and multilingual audio editor and recorder and what i mean by i suppose multilingual is that when you're downloading audacity at the beginning you're given a choice of whether you'd like to uh, to use the english language french language german language and many other languages and that basically would translate the interface of audacity for you into that language um, if we look here at the bottom of the presentation we can see that using audacity it's, it's possible to record live audio so you can use it in a lecture situation or in a private uh, situation also if you're doing it on your own um, you're, it's possible to convert tapes and uh, and records into digital recordings or CDs using Audacity, which um, which is very interesting. It's also um, very useful for um, for people who might have uh, audio recordings from a certain genre. You can edit Aug Vorbis files, um, MP3 files, which are probably the most common, WAV files, uh, or AIFF sound files also, and it's possible to to import them straight into Audacity and to copy them, cut them wherever you want, take out portions of them and splice or mix a few sounds together. You don't have just one track in Audacity and I'll show you what I mean by that in a, in a second. It's also possible to speed up or slow down the pitch of your recording. So if you find maybe you're speaking too quickly or if you're speaking too slowly, it's possible to edit the pitch um, and the speed of the recording also. Okay. I'll move on and uh, I'll actually at this point just pop up Audacity here on screen for um, anyone who hasn't seen it before. This is the Audacity user interface. Um, again you can see a large blank uh, grey area there in the centre of the screen um, where basically the audio files will be recorded onto. At the top are, is a menu uh, similar to you'd see in anything Microsoft Word or or any software really and uh, the controls here on the upper left are the most important controls that you'll use when using Audacity. The red button here is similar to what you probably aware record. Um, you can also pause if you want to take a break in the middle of making a recording. However, if you want to edit a recording, which I'll show you in a second, you must stop your recording by pressing this yellow square button here. Uh, if you record for a small while and pause and you try to edit your recording, that won't actually work. You have to stop it fully. And then if you want to play back, um, obviously it's, it's the green uh, forward arrow here to play. Um, if you'd like to return to the beginning of your recording, you click this and to go to the end, also this button here. So we'll make a very brief recording and, and, show, you, um, and show you what it sounds like. So this is a test recording using Audacity. I have purposely just paused this audio recording, so I want to try and edit this now. So if I select a portion by simply clicking on an area uh, that I want to remove, for example, this area of silence, I simply click and drag on that. And if I try and click delete or backspace on my uh, keyboard here, you'll see that it, it won't actually work for me because I have just paused the recording. However, if I click on stop and simply click backspace, you see that the, the portion of audio that I've selected is, uh, is removed. So I'd like to play this audio from the beginning. I click on the button to skip to the start of recording and simply click play. This is a test recording using Audacity. So you can, you can hear that that's exactly what it sounds like, which is not, not a bad quality at all. Um, for anyone who's interested, I might just show you where you can download Audacity from and also before I show you how to um, export this um, this file, I want to show you how you can uh, obtain something called Lame MP3 Encoder. If you want to export any, any audio recording that you create as uh, an MP3 file, you must have a Lame MP3 Encoder. Um, this is a freely downloadable encoder from the internet also and um, it, it takes a matter of seconds to download the encoder. So pop back in here and if anyone would like to take down the address maybe of where to get Audacity, it's simply http uh, 
colon forward slash forward slash audacity dot sourceforge dot net and also on screen there is the um the web address where you download lame mp3 um and it's simply lame one dot buenzo dot com dot ar so if you um if you want to export it as i as i mentioned earlier on as an mp3 you must have the lame mp3 encoder so those two addresses can uh, can be fairly important and i'll just show you what it looks like what the screen looks like here for the audacity sourceforge dot net uh, web page so simply when you get to this uh, page here you can simply click to download audacity 2.0.0 which is the latest version and uh we might actually just click on that button and see that it simply wants you to run or save the file so that's very simply how you would uh, download audacity okay just we we'll move on to to the equipment uh, like i mentioned earlier on there's many ways you can record audio however i suppose the two best ways are by plugging in a desktop or else a headset microphone into your laptop or your pc um, basically because the the sound quality is that little bit better um, for this recording actually i'm just using the the laptop speakers themselves i'm not actually using a headset or a desktop microphone uh, but if i were to use it it would possibly um probably improve the the audio recording okay we're going to move on to just uh, a question that many lecturers would uh, usually ask when when creating podcasts and when using audacity to create podcasts is how long should they be um you can see here on screen that i have um the average attention span of an adult listening to a lecture is between 15 to 20 minutes so um perhaps it's probably a good guideline for for the length of a podcast also to be similarly timed um, television shows are approximately 27 minutes in length. The majority of television shows are approximately 27 minutes in length. And there's a lot of research done as to why they're that length. And obviously it's for a reason. It's because, um, you know, I suppose people's capacity to, to take in information and to keep concentrating is, is limited enough. And it's the exact same when listening to, uh, to an audio recording. Obviously, I wouldn't advise or suggest that podcasts be less than five minutes um, because you're not really going to get anything meaningful into five minutes of a podcast. So I suppose a simple answer suggesting the length of a podcast would be aim for the 15 minute mark. And if it goes anything much above that, um, you should be thinking of stopping it at that stage. Um, so I'll just show you now or go through uploading audio files to Moodle or to a learning management system and how to do that. We'll open up Audacity again. Now I've already downloaded my lame mp3 encoder so it's possible for me to um, to export this audio recording that I just created earlier as an mp3 file by clicking on file and going down to export. When I do that I'm given the option to choose a file name so I'm just going to call this file test2. As you can see, I already have a test recording done. So this is just going to be called test2 and ensure that you save as type mp3 files. And we're going to click on save. You'll see that another window appears here within Audacity. Um, it's asking for the artist's name. So I'm simply going to take down my initials. The track title, I'm just going to call test2. Test2. And there's no album title, track number, year, genre, or any comments associated with this recording that I want. So I'm just going to click on OK. So that file should be successfully um, exported to MP3 format. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to um, Moodle and I'm going to go to a course. The, um, I'll just see if I can go to a course here, any course at all. I'll choose... I can choose my own maybe. I'll choose the center for teaching and learning and I might just add the audio recording that I just created to this um, to this course page. So ensure that your editing is, is turned on and scroll down and make sure and click the link to add an activity or resource in the relevant area. Uh, for this example I'm just going to add it beneath this these two test recordings here. So simply add an activity or resource and when you want to upload an audio file to Moodle ensure that you select file and add. 
Okay, we're going to just basically name this test2 and we're going to give it a small dash as a description. In the content area where you want to add the actual audio file, simply click add. Make sure upload a file is selected on the left hand side of the file picker and, and choose the file you want to upload. So we want to upload test2 here. So simply select it and open that file. You'll see that it appears here on the on the beside the choose a file button. Sorry, so test2.mp3 and we simply upload that file. You know that that's done successfully when you see an icon similar to headphones appear in the content area. And we'll simply save and return to course. Okay, we just want to view the course maybe in the way that students would view it. So we'll turn editing off to give us more of a feel uh, as to how a student would view this. So you can see here that there's three audio recordings and we'll try and play the test one that we have most recently uploaded. Okay, you'll see that it appears here nicely in this little flow player um, uh, type of a, a player. So that could be any player but Moodle has a, an inbuilt flow player that allows you to play audio clips. So if we click on play here, this is a test recording using Audacity. So you can see that that's the audio recording we created, the, the four second audio recording earlier on. And we can simply return to um, to our course page. And that's that's basically what the students will see and that's how you'd upload um, an audio file to Moodle. So now we might look at uh, the, the practical application of um, of, uh, of how Maureen in Octon um, used Audacity in, in, in her um, in her lecture uh, in her lectures um, and what Maura did she might explain better than me so I might let Maura explain yeah. while I uh, show you or demonstrate on the laptop. Well, we, we try to um, <coughs> engage the students as much with language outside the language workshops as much as in. So I, I, I jumped on the opportunity of um, uh, Valentine's Day there a few weeks ago that uh, students had to bring in a suggestion for a favourite love song or a poem and they had to then after class send um, the um, the the link and I put some of them up on the site but one of the students happened to be listening to Radio Nagoltachta and heard that there was an opportunity to enter a competition to win chocolates and champagne. Uh, and um, he went and he wrote a little poem for, for the particular programme and he, it went out live on, on a programme. So I thought that this would be an opportunity to get that piece and put it up and that would add a bit of flavour to the class. So I found the the date I knew it was on on the twelfth of February because they were culminating <laughs> on the fourteenth with all the prizes. Now, as you see, the, the, that program goes out from um, quarter past nine to eleven o'clock. So obviously, you don't want them listening to the whole thing. So one of the first things you have to do is uh, whatever snippet you want to find the actual time it's on so i uh, my uh, i found it was at around 23 minutes mm -hmm. right so are you going to bring that up there yeah i'll yeah. try uh -huh. and download it now and so and so i brought there. that into audacity right um, so i listened to uh, to find out where exactly it was on the program so that's filling up nicely here and that should pop up now in a second just to, yeah. to show it. Yeah, because it's it. such a big file, you see, it will take, take a while. Yeah. So there it is. So then you open that in. And you can simply drag and drop the files also, which is very handy, straight into Audacity, um, mm -hmm. just like we're doing here. It'll, it'll take it'll a It'll take bit. a little while now because it's so, it's so big. So what you do then, of course, is you cut out what goes before it and then cut out. It, it's very handy, really. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, this uh, the particular Radio the Belt, the one anyway, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it depends on the program. It depends on, and you see this program, they, they, I think they will have them up for about a month. You know, it's not necessarily that you'll have them there all the time. Do you bring the file... Where, where on the website did you find the actual file, Maura? 
in in the program itself you go to Irishinier on the day yeah you go to the website of Radio Magaltachta and then along the side there you have Pod Creality and you come along to your program and you press on the program and the Pod Creality of the of the, the weeks back. Oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can't do it with all the programs I'm writing the well, Gaelic, but uh, they they have it for this particular one. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I probably. I think you could because well, what they do is they separate them. They have them in. It's easier for some of those programs because they tell this is the bit of Marion Fanuc and that did the papers. Yeah. So yeah, it's easier actually. Yeah. Mm. Where, so, do you want to show it here? Yeah, what I had just was a link there to the Radio Nagel, the web, website. So when I clicked on the the picture there that I had in the presentation, it simply brought me straight to the okay. the podcast player and into the Inish and Year. Yeah, but I'd given you that, but mm -hmm. I'd also given you the one on just Radio Nagel itself, and it will show you where to, yeah. to where to tap on from there. Exactly. And then you just see if you click. Um, that below yeah, it'll below. show you. Oh, yeah. Now um, this should be hopefully because it's so big. You see, that's why it's um it's so slow. But as I say, I'd figured out it was around the twenty two, twenty three mark. Mm -hmm. So you bring yourself. Uh, you know, when you're this is a test. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 very possible to play tracks over one another. You could have a background theme music, yeah. um, if if you like that, over your voice or something. I'm like very that. basic now. I don't do any yeah, of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can put on, I think, multiple tracks. To be honest with you, you could put on four or five if you wished, but it'd start to clash probably. You could put on, you could put on as many as you wanted. If you had small little sounds, you could put them on at a specific time on a track of their own. Um, so you could have multiple, multiple tracks down along. Um, just they might be playing at different stages. Um, so I'll just want to play. Yeah, one play now. That's the beginning. So bring it along now to 22 seconds or whatever. It yeah, was. to zoom in is uh, you click on yeah. this here. Okay. So you, you see, see it spaces out more for you. There. So, we so bring it along to 21, let's say. 21. So if we go to 21 minutes, 20... I don't know, you see, I don't know. We'll try and play from there. Oh, that's around that, yeah. It's a little bit after that. But not a little bit after that. Just a minute after that, even. No, a little bit more. After this now, I think. <laughs> this is it. That's the point now. That this is the you see, it's after that, yeah. So you could go back to where... Because before that, I'd want to start my piece. Yeah, so right, we know so that it's back. approximately yeah. there where we have the marker, for example. Let's see. Yeah, right. so and all you do is mark that and just spread the whole thing back and delete. Yeah. And, and then where does it start then? You can show them. And that deleted or should have deleted. Should have cut it off. Yeah, this is just yeah. taking a little bit of time. Apologies. Yeah. Play. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, we'd still have to cut a little bit more of it. <laughs> now, stop. Now, from, uh, so cut off that bit so you could actually zoom out to give you more space. Mm -hmm. You'll see what you're doing. You know, you don't necessarily have to do that because there's so little of it, I suppose. But if we just jump back and
Chne. Stop and Chne. And go back. Yeah. No, anything from behind this there. point. And you can pause yeah. there and we can just simply delete. Delete. And you press your delete button. And your piece will start from there now. And that's the piece I want, right? So then, let's say, give it two minutes, just because we don't want to be delaying too far on this, right? Mm -hmm. No, that's stop there. You can cut off the rest of it because I don't want it, because that's the actual piece you want, right? Perfect. So you, you no, that's the piece I want. Yeah. You, so you can you, actually cut that. You can go either way. Yeah, if you want to just cut this piece actually by clicking yeah. on the keypad for Control X. Yeah. Uh, you can actually paste it onto another another piece. piece work if on you that want bit. Us. Work on that bit. So do you want to do you want to show them the finished product? Yes. Or, yeah, we can say? show the finished product. Then you just literally export it. That's the one thing to remember that you are exporting as an MP3 file, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, I'll just find your course here again, Yeah. And just name it then and put it into. Are you it, saying there, David, you know, the way can you just cut it out by yeah. Control V or. Yeah, you can, if you press Control X, for example, you'll be able to cut out the area you want. Um, and then if you click on this tiny little X button in the upper left here, you'll actually delete the remaining uh, recording. And if you press Control V, it will create a track with just the audio that you've, That's all you you've cut. Um, which is very handy. So I'll just try and find Mara's course now. Sorry, this is a bit slow. Um, my laptop must be under a small bit of pressure, I'd say, with everything open. Um, Does Cardland have the So it should come in there. Next one. Yeah, go down now. Let me find it. I can't understand why there's three of them. But anyway, mm -hmm. I've tried the last one. I the don't last. know why it came up three times because I thought I only. What's that? I just want to finish for time on my fair. Could you remind me to make a stone cry? Get you with your mind. Just one of the things that I'm talking about. Come on, can you show me my kind? I'm a little plaster, balance labor, and stuff. Come on, come on, come on, come on, swing. We're supporting raw wind. Oh, so. So, 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 so that's basically what the whole thing is, and it's there then for the rest of them. And it actually creates a bit of, I won't say excitement, yeah. but, <laughs> but you know, it made it a bit more more, yeah. more alive in that, uh, that far, you know, so yeah. that's how that worked, yeah. Okay. yeah. But another way, what I've been doing as well, will we go on to that, you know, that yeah. I'm here, that I... Uh, with Audacity, one of the tasks we set our students, they have to send an audio file to their tutor of um, a, a three-minute um, piece of continuous talk, not read out. And I thought, since yes, they were sending it as audio, that would be useful to give them feedback in audio as well, so that A, they're listening to me, and B, they have to be more careful rather than just having it written to them and I did that through Audacity as well and did it very very easily on Audacity and just created an mp3 file and um, there's an example of that mm -hmm. there. Yeah we'll just play this mp3 yeah. file so far. Dekrachtavianne <laughs> Um, being shaved with the ashen, do to freshen another we took out in the boon target, ta raw one ill aisen agam. She knew this tabati ugusis crinia, le ra raw one. You can stop it there. So you see, you can work in your little grammar point and they have to listen and they hear it applied, and I, I find it very effective, and that's done through audacity as well. Great in that context, you know, we're getting to. Pronunciation effects of the grammar 
Yeah, no. yeah. Uh huh. So, and I sent it back to them uh, on Moodle, and it's there in their assignment feedback, and they just click on the assignment feedback, and they can listen to the MP3 file there. Did you put that in through Gradebook then? Is it? I did, but even though I'm not writing a gradebook on it, yes, yeah. but you go through gradebook and you press, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What kind of feedback did you get? Again? We've, we're only doing it now. It's more, yeah. The feedback is they find it difficult to, well, some of them found it challenging, and I found it challenging as well at the beginning because I don't think I had clicked the right place where they could actually send a sound file to me. And But what they had done was they had sent it to me by email. Anyway, but of course, MP3 files are quite big, even mm -hmm. though they're small, and they, they that would fill up your box fairly quickly. So the minute I got one in, I was putting it aside as well uh, in a separate um, file. Um, uh, but they did send it to me by uh, by email. But I think we're going to improve now. But they've had no problem listening back to my my response to them. But I think we tend to assume that they actually know more about this kind of thing than they actually do. Yeah. But Jim Coleman has an amount of um, small little quarters that he can lend out to students to make their files, and he's been very um, helpful to them as well. So all of that is available. But a number of them did it on their phones, uh, and they were knew how to do that. Yeah. We were talking about investing in a set uh, of um, iPod touch. Oh, right. Like the iPhone, yes. the phone, yes. yeah. We could lend out for that kind of thing. So well, they have those little machines. I think there's about, Jim has about 30 of them, so you should actually talk to him and yeah. see what's, what's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can they download and save your, your podcast then onto their own computer, or is it embedded in Google? Is there a security over like, or, you know, like No, yes, I know what you're saying. Online. Can they? Yeah, it's actually possible to do it both ways. If you'd like them to be able to download the audio recording, you actually can let them download the MP3 file directly. If you'd like them just to be able to listen to it when on Moodle, you can set that as well. And that's actually the default or the automatic setting within Moodle as it is at the moment. So they actually are, are not permitted by the default setting to uh, to download it, but it's a very simple change. Um, in, in, in when you're putting the file up, it's simply just clicking a drop down menu, and I can show you here yeah. almost as well if if it might make things easier. I'll just return to my um my own course that I just inserted the audio recording into earlier, and if we make sure again and turn editing on, and we'll go into the test two file that we actually uploaded um here. So clicking on the pencil icon, we can. We can see the file name and the description and there's the file and you see the display here is set to automatic. The automatic display within Moodle is actually the flow player so when you click the, the file it opens up the flow player for you. You can also embed it forced download so the student would be actually forced when clicking on the audio recording to download it to their own uh, laptop where they could actually if it's an mp3 file or something like that edit it themselves if they have a copy of Audacity. So. That's uh But how could they just save it to their own? Yeah, by by downloading it, yeah. Or by by force down but it, yeah. that's if I gave them the permission to do that. That's it. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to work uh, you simply leave it the oh, at yeah. uh, the default automatic, uh, and that opens the flow player but within Moodle. But if it's at force download, that means everybody has to download it, and yes. maybe they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's the problem, so it's either one or the other. Exactly, yeah, it's at the lecture's so discretion, better yeah. put it at automatic then, I think, because, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone anyway, you want your voice to make open YouTube or anything? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know, but, but that it's up there. <laughs> but we don't know, but that's happening anyway. We don't know what's been recorded when we talk. Oh, yeah, that's the But that's simply how you do that, anyway. Um, if, if there are any more questions uh, about it, or it's just it's it's a very very handy thing to use and to know how to use really because um it's it's free which is great, uh it's open source so there is support there I mean there there is um it, it's very easy um also to remove noise um for example when I created my audio recording earlier on there was a small bit of 
maybe disturbance in the background and it does it's very easy using audacity to remove that noise and you have a clean uh, audio recording so that there's an awful lot of effects and and things like that within audacity uh, that you can use you know with practice to enhance your audio recording as well so it's it's worth just figuring out a small bit about them if you're removing it yeah i'll just show you um we've used more as clip here so is it all right to yeah, delete sure, that clip sure, sure. And we, if we say for example if we create another recording just saying this is a test recording and stop there and so and this is a test recording and we just want to delete this maybe because it's not needed and say for example this area here um, and maybe make it a bit more obvious this area here this large area here say for example that was background white noise or, or disturbance and we wanted that to be more silent mm -hmm. you simply highlight the area using the using the um, selection tool here highlight the area that you think should be silent but is not appearing as silent you then go to effect and there's an option within the effect um, drop down menu called noise removal okay. and if you simply click on noise removal there is a two step process that you're shown the first step in that process is to get a noise profile so what audacity does is it takes a noise profile of the the audio that you've highlighted so you get the noise profile and audacity won't let you know that it's taken that but it, it only takes basically a few seconds then what you must do is simply highlight the entire recording that you want that area or that noise profile to be taken for and then you perform the second step which is simply go to noise removal and we leave the noise reduction um, parameters here as they are by default and simply click on OK. You can also preview that if you want to preview the entire clip. So we'll just click on OK. Um, as I chose an area where I was speaking, it's probably going to distort the audio a small bit. But you just see here that the wavelengths are completely uh, minimized. So it's removed any noise that Audacity got from that noise profile in the background. And if we play this clip again, this is this recording. So you can see it's an awful lot softer. Yeah. The noise has been removed um, from the audio recording. The noise was simultaneous, like if something had fallen on your bank while you were talking, it would have just it reduced. Exactly, exactly. Um, the, tr the, the trouble with that maybe and would be that if something banged and if you highlight the bang and try and remove that noise then if that's a large sound then a lot of your lower sounds are also going to be reduced so they'll, they'll be quite yeah. Yeah. it's actually it depends an awful lot on the quality of the microphone you use and, and, and Maura mentioned earlier on that she uses um a desktop microphone to record uh, her files um, sometimes you might hear a small bit of feedback and there'll be a little bit of fuzziness or here on, on the wavelength there might be a bit of fuzziness exactly and say something like this that if that was not totally like a straight line and you thought that that was noise then you could remove something like that and that removes all the white noise or the kind of graininess from your audio yeah. Well, actually, for just when I mentioned there, you, you remember the, the second step of the two yeah. step process. If you only want to remove the noise from the portion that you've selected you can simply follow the second step with just that yeah, highlighted right. yeah okay. absolutely but, but if you, you do want, lose everything else though too you see isn't um, that the problem if you don't have the track highlighted fully like if you click here anywhere on the left hand side you, you highlight the entire track you're, you're supposed to do that if you want to remove white noise from the entire audio recording but if you if you like you mentioned Adele just had this highlighted and carried out step two then that's the only area that that, that effect will, will take place within yeah or yeah. I suppose you do then, but you know, say like the most experienced broadcasters would do. I suppose if it, it don't go far when they're recording, they just do the do it again. You know, you just go back and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go back and then you take it out later. So yeah, yeah. Rather than just keep on, yeah. yeah. But I haven't got this. I know, but uh, there, there, there's a feature, but I can't remember where it is now. But uh, my husband was showing me where at the beginning it go, it, it brings you in. 
uh, it kind of brings you gradually into it and it fades out at the end That's of that. Right. It makes a very nice feature of it yeah. and it's very simple, isn't it? it? There is. It's actually this envelope tool. And yeah. That's probably just a small point to finish on as well. You'll see when, when you click on the select tool here, the selection tool, and you change to the envelope tool, you'll see the recording slightly changes and shows you the pitch that it's at at the moment. Now, by using the envelope tool, you can simply pick a point in your recording. So, for example, if we'd like it to fade in as far as here, so it gets heightened here, we can select that and you'll see the tiny little dots, four dots appear in a straight line. If you simply drag those dots up or down, you'll see that you can minimize and maximize the audio for that portion of the recording. So, for example, if we had another point back here, we can minimize this. So it gives us the effect of kind of a fade into the recording. Uh, during the recording, if you wanted to put another point, simply here, and it would fade back down. And then towards the end of the recording, you might want to... Yeah. Mm put it up again and that distorts the recording quite a bit but it's lovely as, as Maura mentioned yeah, for a fade in. Yeah, I'll play this and see what it sounds like. Oh, sugar, sorry, I'll start from the beginning. This is a test recording. Not much of a difference no, because... No. But, uh, yeah, but, it, but it, you know, sometimes when you start listening to something it's just too yeah, loud. Yeah. And so if you do it gradually, it is, it is better. Mm. But yeah, it, uh, it's a handy tool and it's free and it's very simple to use. So just I'd encourage people to have a go anyway. Yeah, you might mention that's what the one that we talked about just yeah. at the beginning, that fact. <laughs> Absolutely, Mara. Yeah, and Mara's mentioned there about um, an actual online uh, voice recording service that's free, also called Vocaroo, mm -hmm. um, which seems to be which seems to be um, an excellent resource actually because you can simply click and record audio when you simply visit vocaroo.com and if we make a brief audio recording simply now just this um, will allow it to access our microphone uh, it's immediately recording we can see here so it's recording what I'm saying now and you simply click to stop and if you want to listen to your recording uh, it's immediately recording we can see here so it's recording what I'm saying now and you simply and you can that's a very high pitched uh, version yeah. Um, and if you'd like to save the recording, there's a little link here. Um, you can click here to save it, or you can simply go back and retry if you want to record again. So you have the option of maybe going back if you're not happy with it. Um, the advantage that Audacity has over Vocaroo is that you're able to edit the audio. Uh, the advantage that Vocaroo has, I suppose, is that it's so simple. It doesn't require a download, and it's accessible by just go going to a web page. Um, if I click on the click here to save um, link, you're given the option to embed it or email it. And you can also see here, um, I'm not sure if I can uh, show you this, but you can download it as an MP3 file or in just other um, audio formats also. And Maura mentioned a nice little feature earlier on to me as well. You can actually get a QR code for this audio. So if you have a QR reader on your smartphone, you can actually scan the code and the audio file that you've recorded here will play for you on your phone. So it's, it's, it's a nice little feature and it's a very good resource. To be, to be a very handy one for students to record. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And there's also an option up here I've just seen to upload a file if you wanted to upload an MP3 and and simply then maybe get a QR code for that. So if you have an existing MP3 that you'd like a QR code for, it seems that it's very, very possible to make one of them also. So uh, that's Vocaroo. <laughs> just a friend of mine who teach has mentioned it to me that she uses it a lot herself. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, David and Laura. Uh, David did the work. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.